Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be making the base for the build platform for the tube frame. Now, in the previous video, I made the outline frame. What I'm working on on this video is I'm making the, uh, the stronger frame that's going to go underneath this frame to hold it straight and to um, give it some strength. Just like I got the dimensions for the outline frame from the software, I got the dimensions for this frame from the software also. If you notice, it ties in in the same points as the, uh, the tube chassis is going to, meaning these pieces here are going to have pieces of steel on top of them for the chassis. This piece back here goes underneath the piece of the chassis. This brace going across here is going to have a piece of the chassis on top of it. Everything, everything that you see here will have more built on top of it for the chassis. And then what I did on the ends here is I made it stick out two inches farther. And then I drilled three quarter inch holes at four points here. I got one there, 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 and there. So I got four points and I'll be installing this three quarter inch threaded rod through there with, I'll have casters, I'll have fixed casters on the back of the chassis so that when I'm building the chassis, I can pick the front end, pick the front end up and roll it around the garage a little bit if I need to. And if you remember, the plan is um, because I need to be able to, I want to be able to build this frame and have the Baja bug in the garage together. So what my plan is, when I'm working on this chassis, I'll roll the bug out and then the chassis, I think, is going to, with my hoist, I'll lift the front end up so that when I'm not working on it, I can just roll the bug in and kind of tuck it underneath the front. And then when I'm using it, I can lower the front and work on it there. And I think having casters in the back will help me to be able to push that back um, a little bit. I don't know. I'm kind of shooting from the hip on some of this. but. That's my plan so far. I need to be able to do all of this in that one car garage because I'm not going to keep the bug on the driveway and I can't use any, uh, any more of the garage. So we'll see. So this, this base platform, I'm trying to make really, really accurate. So I'm trying to, to plot my measurements as accurately as I possibly can because once I build the chassis, anything that's a little bit inaccurate here is just going to be magnified as I build up onto the chassis. So I want to point, I want to just show you guys a couple of things that I'm doing while I lay this out to try and keep my accuracy as accurate as possible. I think first and foremost, you'll notice that all of the pieces are labeled. Every piece says something. I'm cutting these out and, and doing as much kind of prefab as I can in the basement just because it's, it's nice and cool. This is where my bandsaw is and then uh, I don't have to push the bug out to do this. But now I've gone basically as far as I can down here. So I need to carry all of this upstairs so that I can clamp everything together and start welding it. Well because I did all the layout down here, everything is labeled so that when I carry it back upstairs everything will go back together the same way that I laid it out down here. And then for layout, I labeled everything with paint marker, but I didn't use this for layout because this is very inaccurate. Then I've got my Sharpie and sometimes I do some layout with those, but that's also not very accurate. So all of the layout I did, I did with a scratch all because this is very accurate. It's got a very, very, very fine tip, so you can mark things out and you don't lose much accuracy with that. Then when I was measuring things, I did as much measuring as I possibly could with my flat rulers. So this is a 48 inch flat rule. I've got a 24 inch flat rule. I've got a uh, 18 inch T-square, six inch T-square, 12 inch T-square. I did as much as I could with these I tried to do almost nothing with just a regular old tape measure like this. There was a couple of times where I, I needed to make really long measurements, so I did that with this. But for the most part, if I didn't have to use this, I didn't because these are actually pretty inaccurate um, just by their nature. Then as you saw in the beginning of this video, 
I went and picked up the three inch by two inch uh, rectangular steel from the scrapyard. I put it in our sedan. Uh, if my wife sees this video, she's going to go ballistic on me uh, because I put that steel in there. But, you know, when I do that, I put blankets down everywhere and foam and strap it down real tight. And believe it or not, I, I don't make any mess in the car, but I wanted to show you guys that's how I get the steel home. And then when I'm doing projects like this and I'm trying to be really accurate um, and I'm going to be doing a lot of layout and a lot of handling with the steel, I put it in the front yard and I wash it with Dawn dish soap and a nice bristle brush. Get all that kind of like manufacturing oil off of it before I bring it into the house. Then I bring it into the house and actually as I make the cuts in the bandsaw, when I actually have my pieces before I do the layout, I wash them again because when they're smaller pieces like that, I can wash them even more. So by the time I'm doing the layout, they're actually pretty clean. And then as I'm doing the layout and just handling them, I don't get as dirty. And at least for me, if I can stay cleaner, that just actually makes me um, more reluctant to stay more accurate because um, I don't know why. I just feel better when I'm clean. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break all this apart. I'm going to carry it upstairs into the garage and I'll do some video of me uh, jigging it all up and keeping things square and doing some welds and uh, you know making this an actual structure that I can put the base of the chassis on. If you guys remember in the video before this where I was welding up this, um, this base that I was going to build the chassis off of, I wasn't 100% um, if it was as accurate as I wanted it to be. I did everything I could, but when I was trying to measure it and whatnot, once I had it built, I couldn't tell if it was 100% accurate. So I came up with a way that I could uh, check to see how accurate it was. And I want to show that to you because I wanted to check that before I built the base platform, which I am uh, just carried upstairs and I'm getting ready to lay out up there. So what I did is I accurately, and I know that this has a Sharpie, it looks like a Sharpie line, and I just told you that Sharpies aren't accurate, and I stand by that. What this is actually is I marked it with a scriber, but then so that I can easily find it again, I run over that with a, uh, a Sharpie. But if, you can, probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a groove in there because running through the middle of the Sharpie, you can see the scribed line. So what I did is, that's a very, very accurate mark of center line for this back piece. And I did the same thing up front. A very, very accurate mark of center line for the front bar. Then what I did is I took a solid piece of paper. This runs the whole length of the chassis. And I went around the outside edge with a pencil and I marked the line and then I went with scissors and I traced that whole thing out. So what I had is a perfect template of half of the chassis. What I did, and I'll do it again right now, is I then take the chassis and I flip it. Okay, so now as you just saw, I left the template, but I took the chassis and I just flipped it. So now the template is actually on the other side of the chassis. And then I marked I got my center line just like I had it before right on the edge of the template. And then if I go around, you know, there's maybe a sixteenth, maybe three thirty seconds of deviation, but I'm I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure before I continued moving forward with the base platform and building more onto this, um, that I was pretty accurate and you know, being pretty much within a sixteenth and at least knowing now that I didn't have dramatic differences in the angles from side to side, I'm very comfortable with that. I'm sure that's more accurate than the first chassis that I built on the bug right now. So I just wanted to show you guys how I verified my accuracy there. So now uh, I'm going to go up to the garage and start clamping together the, the base and tack weld in that place.
now I got the base welded up. I think as I build on the top platform a little bit, I might add some pieces back here to facilitate the rear engine cage. I'm not going to do that right now though. I'm going to do that as I build the frame and if I think that I need the structure, I'll put that on there. Um, for now, all I'm going to do with this is check it for straightness a little bit more. Although it's, it seems pretty straight. I mean, it's probably not perfectly straight, but as far as, you know, a garage built jig, I think it's pretty straight. Quite, quite straight actually. I did as good a job as I possibly could keeping everything square and straight when I was welding that up. Now I got these legs. Like I said, the two back ones here have caster wheels on them, although they don't, they're not directional, they're just fixed going forward and backwards. The front, I didn't, I didn't buy it yet. I need to buy some 24 inch, uh, three quarter inch threaded rod. I'll put those on those end. And then when I set the chassis down to actually work on the chassis, I will use these four legs to adjust it to level the, the chassis both this way and that way. And then when I'm working on it, it'll be nice and level. And then when I'm done working on it, I'll hook it up to the hoist and pick it up and hopefully pull the uh, Baja bug in kind of nested underneath it. I'm hoping. That's my plan. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to work. But that's why the rears are going to be on casters so that I can pick the front end up and walk it around a little bit and let it kind of teeter when the, uh, the hoist picks it up. But that remains to be seen. So either way, all I got left to do here is I'll clean this up and then I got to clean all this stuff up. Drop this down, pull the bug in, and I'm going to call that an evening. I've been out here for a couple of hours. Uh, it's pretty hot and humid out here, so um, you know that's always a little bit more difficult working when it's like that. But you know we're out here because we like to tinker. So, anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Next time you see me, I'll have the base platform on here, and I'll be building on that a little bit. I'm not going to put the base platform on here yet because I am going to check this for square a little bit more. I'll probably do that tomorrow or at the beginning of the next video. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hopefully it's motivating you to go work on something of your own, whatever it is. And I hope I see you on the next video. Take care.